Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about final methods, or more importantly applying the final keyword to methods. I'm going to open up my website here at javacjava.com Click on the menu, select Java OOP Tutorials. That's my Object Oriented Programming Tutorials page. I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom to Final Methods. The keyword final can be applied to many things. In the next few tutorials, I will explore how it affects the behavior of methods, classes, or variables. There are some slight key differences in the functionality of the final keyword with respect to what you're applying it to. When the keyword final is applied to methods, it will prevent a method from being overridden in a subclass. The method will still be inherited, it just simply cannot be overridden. Applying final to a method is common when a method is called from a constructor and you want to ensure that its functionality cannot be changed when used in future subclasses. Okay, let's go ahead and scroll down here and highlight all this code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Move the browser off screen. I have a shortcut to the command prompt down here on my desktop. If you don't, you can simply go, you can simply right click, select new shortcut, type in CMD, and next and finish. It's just that easy. We'll type in Java C, which is the Java compiler command. Press enter. Now you should see all this stuff scroll by. If you don't, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly prior to continuing. Type in CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory. Backslash tells it to go to the root. Type in MD, which is make directory in Java. Right? I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. And then we'll change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make another directory, and I'm just going to call this one uh, final methods. We'll change to the final methods. We'll notepad. Boy, if I could type this morning, finalmethods.java. Okay, finalmethods.java is going to be the name of our source code file. Control V to paste this stuff in. Let's go save it real quick. So there's three classes inside of the source code file. Um, there's a class called commission, right? And commission will basically calculate the commission that a salesperson will get on a sale. And um, We've got a private double data type variable payout, instance variable payout here, right? Well encapsulated because it's private and it's a double data type, we're initializing it to zero. We've got our no argument default constructor here with a call to super. And then we've got an overridden, I'm sorry, an overloaded constructor here, commission, right? Which um, receives a parameter of double data type sales price. Now what it'll do when, um, when it's selected is it'll go ahead and execute the calculate payout method and pass sales price in as an argument. And that will return back a double value that will set the payout variable. Okay. So here is the, the important method here, the, the calculate payout method here where it receives the double sales price as a parameter and it takes sales price and multiplies it by 0.3275. So we're, we're basically going to pay the salesperson a 32.75% payout based on their, for their commission. And that will return that value there, right? Obviously, and assign it to payout. Okay, and then we've got a, a getter method there, right? And an accessor method, if you will, that just simply returns payout if we want to get that value. So it looks like we've got this all well encapsulated and, and really good there, really solid. No way that anyone can manipulate it from the outside. But that's actually not the case as I'm going to show you. So, we, um, we weren't thinking and we're like, oh, okay, blah, 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 you know. I never even crossed my mind that someone may, you know, um, extend uh, uh, make create a sub make use this as a super class someday right so sure enough come down here and somebody is like oh let's just uh, create salesperson extend commission there right so we just inherited all of the members of commission and remember um, 
constructors are not members so we just inherited everything else right so we can come down here and <clears throat> in the salesperson class declared a, a string name set it equal to empty there basically no string and we got a private uh, modifier on there so it's it's um, not a directly accessible there and then we've got our no fault default no fault <laughs> no argument default salesperson constructor here with a call to super and then we've got our salesperson constructor here which receives uh, overloaded constructor which receives um, a string name and a double sales price right and so the first statement we're going to execute is super and we're going to super the sales price that comes in here um, the sales price parameter we're going to pass the pass it to the default con or the constructor that matches this particular signature up here in the super class right which happens to be this one right here okay that'll do that'll calculate everything out there right and then we've provided a um, a getter method or an accessor method here to return back the name right so we'll inherit the get payout we'll inherit um, we won't inherit the private right because the private actually prevents uh, something from being inherited there can't even see it but that's in, in another future tutorial where I start talking about um, access modifiers but we'll definitely um, inherit this we'll inherit this and uh, we'll be able to access those so let's come up here to the final methods class and the main method entry point the first thing I'm doing is is just declaring a uh, and initializing a total price variable double data type equal 100.00 D double type then I'm creating a new salesperson uh, red reference variable a salesperson object type reference variable name person and I'm assigning it to a new uh, salesperson object and initial and basically calling the salesperson constructor that matches this signature right here of string and uh, double right which will come down here and say oh, okay let's go and execute this here's our string name and our double now we can't put in uh, we can't make this the first line I just want to reiterate that super if you're going to use it always has to be the first line um, always has to be the first statement I should say lines have absolutely nothing to do with it but the first statement executed has to be the super there or a call to this with another constructor there but anyway so the this.name cannot be the first statement executed just a little nuance of, of job I just wanted to mention that again there because sometimes that slips people's minds so new salesperson Bob and total price right um, and then we'll display basically we'll get use the get name invoke the get name function to get the name and then plus and then the string literal here right uh, made dollar sign plus and then we'll invoke the get payout right that we inherited from the commission class right salesperson and then plus the string literal uh, commission on a sale of dollar sign and then plus total price which is just this uh, variable right up here is local variable so let's go ahead and save this and run it and then I'll talk about some other stuff here clear our screen compile it invoke it okay so we got Bob made thirty two dollars and seventy five cents commission on a sale of one hundred dollars and I'm gonna go ahead and move that off offline there so that basically worked exactly how we wanted it to all right, so the one thing that we overlooked here is that it is possible because we we extended commission here and we inherited all of its its members there. We inherited this and we inherited this. We can uh, basically like cut or copy this this whole entire thing. We can override this method down here and change it. Yeah, hey, let's let's make this 42.75 percent pay payout now, right? And so this 32.75% is really important, really important. But um, you know we didn't protect this method in any sort of way from being overridden. So some somebody else coming along, is not really familiar with what was negotiated or contract terms or anything like that, or who knows, you know, it's just 
changes it here instead of up here, right? So let's go ahead and compile this and run it. And now Bob made $42.75 commission on a sale of $100. So how do we prevent a subclass from overriding one of our methods? Well, it's actually really easy. We just put in the final keyword here. So that will tell the compiler that basically this particular method here can never be overridden in any of uh, any subclasses. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that here. And then we'll go ahead and compile it and we'll get our nice error that we're expecting. So we're getting an error, calculate payout in salesperson, right? Cannot override calculate payout in commission. Overridden method is final, okay? So they wouldn't even be able to come down here and make this whole program compile anymore. So the only way we can make this compile is to remove the calculate payout, uh, the overridden calculate payout method there and then go ahead and compile this again, right? And then we can clear our screen. Let's just run it again and there we go. Now we're back to the way it should be. Bob made 3275 commission on a sale of $100. So that's, that's the way it works there. You know, when you have a method that, that you really don't want to ever be overridden later on, right? Like this particular one where it's important that the calculations are done properly and that no subclasses um, will ever be able to change it, then you just want to add the final keyword. Because you can imagine like if it did change to 4275 and you come back and you're looking at your commission code here and you're like, well, this is weird, it's 0.3275, right? When you look at a, um, a class like this, right? <clears throat> you don't really have any way of knowing right off the bat that your class is actually the super class of a subclass that is overridden your method there, right? So by applying final to this, we can ensure that no one will be able to change this in any subclasses that really, frankly, we have no idea about, right? So that is the purpose of the final keyword as it relates to methods. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, and leave you with some final thoughts. So sometimes when you create a class, it doesn't even cross your mind that someone else may extend your class in the future. The ability to understand when to apply the final keyword to a method is a skill that just takes time and experience to master. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.